If you've been following my channel for a bit, you know that I have a self-built tensile testing machine that I regularly use to analyze the strength of different materials. Due to its design, it can only test in tension, so today I'll show you how I designed and CNC'd myself a jig to finally be able to perform compression tests. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. I own a new CNC router from GoCNC and in order to learn more what it can handle, I used this project to do some more aluminum routing. I'll show you the whole process from CADS to CAM, overcutting the aluminum extrusions, machining, assembly and finally crushing some infill patterns. I built myself the tensile testing machine around two years ago because I wanted to assess the strength of my 3D printed parts. Unfortunately, the location of the bearings is in a way that it can only perform tension tests because otherwise the bearings of the stepper motors would need to handle the loads and they wouldn't be happy about that. Previously, I had already taken a look at the strength of different 3D printed infill patterns, but in order to dive even deeper into this topic, I wanted to find out how much pressure the different structures would be able to withstand and to see how 2D and 3D infill patterns compare. I still wanted to use my existing equipment with a load cell and not some kind of vise or hydraulic press. So I came up with the idea of two intertwined rectangular structures. If I pull these ones apart, the section in the middle gets compressed. I wanted to use 40x40 40 40 aluminum extrusions for the horizontal members and plywood for the sides, which should be totally fine since the wood is only loaded in tension, what it can easily handle. With this construction, I'd be able to assemble and disassemble everything in a short period of time if I want to get back to my normal tensile test setup with the clamping grips. In Fusion 360, I added the extrusion profile using a DXF I previously downloaded from the item website. It wasn't 100% the same one that I had, but close enough for my design and cam. I added a stepped hole in the center of the profile, which will be machined and which I'll use to fit a 12mm bolt through that connects to the load cell. Then I added the other side of the rectangle and created the side profiles, which will be machined from 12mm plywood. The other side was almost the same, with one slight difference, that was that instead of the round hole for the bolt head, I added the square pocket for a nut because I wasn't able to buy such a long bolt and had to use a threaded rod with two nuts on the ends. I switched to the cam module and created my toolpaths. I had to machine it from both sides because my end mill wouldn't be able to machine through the whole 40mm profile. I set up the parts so that the origin of my work coordinate system was in the middle of the aluminum profile. This will make the two side operation more simple. At first, I used an adaptive strategy for the bigger pocket where the nut will go and finished it with a pocket toolpath. The through hole is created with a ball toolpath where the end mill is not simply plunging into the material but creates a hole using a helical motion. I set the depth to 21mm so that I'll later definitely have a complete hole with the toolpath from the other side. The second setup is from the other side where I simply create a hole again with a helical pattern. For the sides I first created the holes with a bore operation and then used the 2D contour with 2mm step down for the outer shape. I added two tabs so that the part will not suddenly come loose at the end of the machining operation. Down in my basement, I at first cut the aluminum profiles to length with my chop saw. I actually thought that this chop saw wasn't able to cut aluminum because the RPM are too high, but I purchased a special multi-material blade which went through the extrusions like a hot knife through butter. Since I know this now, I don't have to build all of my machines out of wood anymore. I attached my small vise to the T-slot table of the next 3D CNC and mounted the first extrusion. I used a 6mm 2 flute carbide end mill for all of the operations, which I already buy for a very long time from Banggood. These are dirt cheap, but they perform very well with all the materials I already threw at them. I usually wouldn't let the tool stick out that much, but the deep cut will require at least 22mm. 
In order to find my zero position, I usually touch my workpiece on all of the sides with the end mill at the lowest RPM setting. This way I know the exact length and by incorporating the diameter of the tool you can find out the exact center position. This method leaves marks on the material which can be avoided if you turn the spindle just by hand. Cutting the aluminum at 25,000 RPM, 1200 mm a second and an optimal load of 1 mm worked out great. I used some lubrication spray to ease the work of the cutter a little. Even the deep plunging operation didn't cause a lot of chatter. Surface finish was great and dimensions were also good. The second side was straightforward. I turned the piece around, found the center and ran the program. The two holes didn't match perfect, but good enough for my purpose. For the wood parts, I attached a sacrificial board to the bed and screwed the plywood on it. I did only export the toolpath of one of the parts, so after the first one was finished, I moved the X0 position 50mm to the right and restarted the program again. My new CNC came with a dust shoe that I directly connect to my dust separator and vacuum, which makes machining much cleaner. Cutting wood with a carbide end mill is always a pleasure. I again ran the spindle at 25,000 rpm and a feed rate of 1200 mm a minute and a bit more than 2 mm step down. I could have pushed it even a bit more, but I wanted to be safe since I still need to gather a bit more experience with my new setup. Just as with my old router, I again use Gerbil as G-code interpreter and use universal G-code sender to transmit the machine code which worked well so far. It lacks some features of Mach 3, but is free and open source. I'm thinking of upgrading to Mach 3 in the future due to features like backlash compensation and the availability of nice remotes. When the parts were finished, I sanded the rough edges and then continued working on the aluminum extrusions. I still had to add the threads. The nice thing is that the holes in the extrusion already have the right bore size for M6 and M8 threads, so I just fixed them in the vise and cut the threads with my cordless drill. Before installing the compression test setup on my tensile test machine, I had to remove the clamping grips. It's not the fastest, but after loosening some bolts, everything comes apart. I assembled the new jig with one side still open and attached it to my tensile test machine and added the remaining crossbar. In order to have a flat surface for the specimens later to rest, I just screwed two small pieces of aluminum to the extrusions, which I also made on my chop saw. And there we have it! I already tested some samples and it works just as expected. Please don't forget to leave a like and if you guys have some idea what I can do with it, then let me know down in the comments. If you don't want to miss the test, then subscribe to the channel. I put quite a lot of effort in my research and if you want to support the making of these videos, then consider becoming a Patreon and take a look at the affiliate links down in the description. I hope you enjoyed it, thanks for watching, auf Wiedersehen and until next time.